Hello everybody, welcome to another video, and welcome to part 2 of the FF class, Power Mac G4 Cube. So if you haven't seen part 1 yet, I highly, highly recommend you go check it out. Um, I'm going to leave an annotation on screen now, and if you're viewing this sort of in the future, then I'll leave all of the um, links to all of the parts in the description down below. But um, basically part one was just sort of like an overview, um, going through all of the parts, explaining my reasoning, why I bought them. Um, this though, this is part two, this is the part that I was by far most excited to do. Um, this is the build. So I really, really hope you enjoy it guys. Um, it was so much fun to record. Um, these cubes, you can see it back there, they are just awesome, awesome systems. Um, so yeah, without further ado, Let's get going. So, first thing to do then is to lift the iconic casing upside down, pop in that awesome handle, and lift the entire core of the computer out. It's just such an incredible design, I love it a bit. After that then, it's time to get to work on the first few screws. Um, now there's eight of these, there's only, I think they're, they're T, Torx T8 screws. Um, yeah, there's just eight of them, and they sort of just hold the main rigidity, the main structure of the computer together. So um, yeah, they have a pretty important job. And there we can see the top case being lifted off along with the power button, the touch sensitive power button, which is awesome to have in the year 2000. And then you've got these uh, four sort of structural pillars to fix to the top case. Here is this sort of metal cable tidy slash sort of blanket plate thing. Um, it stops the ID cable getting caught on the casing as you sort of pull it in or out. Um, and as you can see there, um, there's a lot of space underneath the optical drive. That's the only space where there's any sort of room in this case. So that is where I'm going to be sort of cramming all of my Molex to fan splitter cabling. Next up is the VRM board then. Um, this is a very important little thing. This sort of manages where all the power goes within the system. Um, so yeah, I'll be massively sure to keep that one safe. So now that that's out, we can begin to attack the motherboards. Now there's four main screws and then three on the CPU. You can see they're, they're not there at the moment because there's no CPU installed in the system yet, obviously. Um, and yeah, now is the motherboard being pulled out. There's two main things you've got to sort of worry about here. Um, one, you've got to make sure not to bend the CPU uh, socket pins because they are so, so delicate. And um, secondly, you've got to worry about the IDE and the airport antenna cables. Um, they're pretty delicate too. Let's install our first upgrade then. This is the CPU or base fan. Now, um, Apple obviously intended to release these cubes with faster processors, um, as these cubes can house an 80mm fan without any sort of modification required. Um, but obviously, due to sales figures, um, they didn't bother doing so. Now onto the CPU then. Now what I didn't show on video, I just completely forgot honestly, I did replace the thermal paste. Um, you can see that there's sort of foil um, thermal transfer plates. Um, without that we're going nowhere. And um, yeah, it's just, every time I look at it, it's just such a nice bit of kit. Um, they are so, so hard to come by. Um, and yeah, the thing I had to worry about here really, because I didn't have a camera so I couldn't really balance my head anywhere to see where I was going, um, I had to hit this straight on. The G4 sockets are so, so delicate, and if you mess it up, then it's game over for both the motherboard and the CPU. Now that the CPU is installed, then we can get to work on the graphics card. Now, um, the first thing to do, obviously, is to remove the existing heatsink. Um, there's two little pins there you have to push through, and um, yeah, then sort of pull the pins out of, uh, of the heatsink there. I had a little bit of trouble with this one. But you can see here now, um, as it comes off, this thermal paste, it is just the worst thermal paste I've ever seen in my life. The only thing I can compare it to is like a really, really sort of old dry Play-Doh. Um, I am so surprised that thing hasn't overheated yet. It was just awful, terrible, crispy, crusty, horrible, horrible stuff. After a bit of persuasion, I managed to get all of the existing uh, thermal paste off, and you can see uh, the chip. Um, in all its glory, ready to have fresh thermal paste applied. And here we are then, um, I'm using my trusty tube of Arctic MX4. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, I may be a little bit too much on um, looking back on this video now, but uh, better safe than sorry really, and one thing's for sure, it can't be any worse than the existing stuff. And uh, here is the Titan cooler then. This is gonna make a massive difference. Um, if I left the heatsink on, especially with that old thermal paste, this thing would have cooked within minutes. So, um, yeah, I had a little bit of trouble sort of keeping the cooler still while pushing the pins through. Um, obviously with the thermal paste on it makes everything a bit sort of slick, so it was sliding around all over the place. 
but um, yeah, you can see there that looks absolutely incredible. And with the addition of two little um, sort of heat spreaders on, on the memory chips, you can see there, that is one beastly looking little graphics card going inside the FF Class Cube. Now with the CPU um, installed, we can turn our focus back to the motherboards. Now um, putting the motherboard back in obviously is a little bit of a faff, you sort of have to worry about where the ports line up and stuff. Then you've also got the ports on the back of the motherboard that you have to plug in. Um, it was a bit of a hassle, but um, yeah, not too bad. With the motherboard in then, um, we can get on with our cable management. Now, um, I never thought I'd say that while working on a cube, but you can see sort of there I um, plugged the one splitter into the other because I couldn't plug it into the hard drive Molex because it's just not enough space for the two to um, live there in the same place. So what I had to do really was just plug the one into the other, then sort of just bunch all the cables up roughly sort of direct them in the place I wanted them to go and hope that the um, the optical drive didn't get in the way. And you can see here test fit in the optical drive with the Molex and the IDE cables. Um, you have to worry about the cables getting in the way of the fan as well. Um, don't want that sort of knocking against there. But you can see there it slid in pretty comfortably. Now then working backwards, um, this is the VRM board again, sort of just slides in like a normal sort of PCI card, um, it's quite easy, and that is the, um, the Molex connector as I said earlier, easy enough, and there is the riser cards for our 6200, obviously um, it's such a dense system you have to have some in on a 90 degree angle, um, there's a lot of connectors you can see there on the bottom to plug in, but again that, that wasn't too much hassle at all. And here is the card itself then, the 6200. Um, it just looks so beastly, I love it a bit. Um, you can see there I, I positioned the, the heat spreaders in a way that would push air up. So it'll come off the fins, all the, all the heat will come off the fins, push up through the heat spreader and then out the top of the system. Now onto the less exciting stuff, then this is the airport cards. Um, as I said in part one, this will still be f by far and away enough in terms of speed for what I'm going to be using this cube for and it frees up an all important USB port which is extremely valuable on uh, one of these cubes. Now onto the hard drive then. Um, you can also see there the graphics card cable and um, the way it's sort of tucked around. Um, the whole hard drive SSD thing sparked quite a reaction in the comments section. Um, I'm personally undecided myself as well so I'm totally with you. Um, if I can find one cheap enough down the road then sure whatever I'll give it a go I'll upgrade it and just see how it affects temperatures and stuff but for now it'll be good enough. On the home stretch then um, so there we go you've got to pop the four structural pillars into their respective corners um, plug the power button back in pop the top case on um, but there is one thing that I forgot to do uh, that was install the memory uh, we're not going anywhere without that um, so yeah, three 512 meg sticks are going to go in this system obviously, um, you can see there one sticks in, two sticks in, and three sticks in. Lovely stuff. And there we go, the finished product. Massively upgraded CPU, massively upgraded GPU, a really really nice hard drive, uh, maxed out the RAM, superb cooling for a cube, one of the best you could possibly sort of come up with. This is going to be such an awesome system, I cannot wait to record part 3 now. I really really hope you enjoyed this video guys, um, but as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.